Oh yeah. Andreas 13, once again, yo, camera died, we filming the wake up call. Now we on the cell phone. We're here with Tazar Yah. Tazar Yah, and he's from. All right, so you okay? Okay. But you're known commonly like as from the Israelites, mm -hmm. but the organization I'm in is ISUK. Okay. Now we've asked everybody today, what brings you guys to Hempstead? What gave you guys the impetus to get involved with the wake up call for this community? But for ISUBK, uh, under Commander Jenny Hanna, we've been established since 69. So we've been in New York City, we've been in DC, California. Uh, currently we stretch all the way to Canada, to the UK, South America. And our ultimate goal is to change the lives of Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Like we look at the conditions of the projects that's over there. We look at the conditions and we have something that Black folks need to have in 2019, and that's compassion. Like compassion, the lack of compassion is what's destroying the very fabric of black people. So what we try to do is give them a solution that starts with forgiveness, uh, law, a moral compass to help us grow as a nation. So that's what we do. Now, I've been doing the same thing, but you know what? I, my background is Republican. Everybody knows that. Okay. Uh, everybody knows that they come out of the Katsuji system. They're ninjas. They're, everybody got 10 and 5 degrees. They're masters. And... Kitsugan. Okay. So I could come on TV and talk stuff because 26 years, I got muscle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you guys got compassion, but I seem to have heard about a little bit of muscle that you guys got. Tell me about that. <laughs> I mean, you guys muscle, doing security today, man. Right, okay, but the muscle, even the security is a defense. Okay. The muscle is a defense. Right. We, it's not something where we want to go out and just attack which you can, and there's a place for it. Right. But we're a defense. Like one of our, one of our slogans is defenders of the faith, and defenders of the faith and the belief that with that law, statute, commandments that God gave us, we could actually fix this nation. That's why Christ said the law hinges on two things: to love the Most High with all thy might, soul, and strength, and love thy brother as thyself. So yeah, we strong. Taiwan is a giant, you know what I mean? So here yeah, we strong and we powerful and we're mighty. But without having some form of compassion or forgiveness for our brother, we really are lacking the fundamental quality to fix this nation. Now I'm going to take off my reporter hat because this is not a news story right now. I don't love my enemies. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. I don't want to love my enemy. Mm -hmm. Tell me why should I love my enemy, brother? I don't want to. It depends on the enemy you're talking about. Okay. Now, if you're talking about these brothers in the projects, I love every last one of them. Okay. And at one time, we would be enemies. Right. You know what I mean? Before I came into the trauma, my enemy wasn't the white man. Right? Because I didn't see... My, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. My enemy was the white man. But you didn't but my enemy with also him. Right. But he wasn't my everyday interaction. Right. My everyday interaction was brothers and sisters. Right. And they were my enemy. So now the enemy that Christ or the Bible is telling us to forgive is each other. But because without a harmony amongst blacks, we can't get nowhere. The white man will be our enemy to the day forever. He will always be my enemy. He will always be the one that oppresses my people, that enslaves my people, X, Y, Z. But if we still think we're enemies with each other, we can't battle that. Like the white man, they'll have like, you know, president elects, Democrat, Republican, X, Y, Z. But when they have the enemy called the Taliban or Afghanistan, they unite for that. When they have the enemy of us, they unite for that. The crack epidemic that Ronald Reagan started, the Democrats and the Republicans was down for that as long as it destroyed us. When we came back from Vietnam, that heroin that they let the Vietnamese bring over here was so that they can destroy us. Because although they see Democrat, Republican, the Klan as different entities, they're united against us. So now we have to destroy the barrier of hate that we have for each other. Now you got brothers that will not speak to each other, have a hatred of each other over a piece of block that we don't even own. That barrier has to be destroyed. So just so we can be clear, when I'm talking about an enemy, I'm not talking about a white man or an Arab or anything like that. I'm talking about the enemies that we became with each other. That has to go. Now you see how I got him to give you all that definition? See, I know how to do that. I know how to do that dance. I know how to do that dance. Excellent job, Step too. back. Excellent step job. back. No Watch sweat. me do my no thing. Sweat. Now, I've seen a lot of you guys' videos, and I've seen where you've taken 
authority to put people in in their place. Right. You did it humbly. You did it respectfully. Because like at my, I myself, whenever a European and see a, a black male in charge or is doing something, they feel that because of white skin privilege, right. that they could come in and interact and interject like right. they are the authority. Right. So they right. have to be put in their place. Absolutely. I like how y'all do that. Yeah. I like how y'all do that. I be mean, cracking up. <laughs> so, but you know, I would say I was telling him, you know, now that y'all know for that, you know. Just uh, smooth it out a little bit because sometimes you want to follow it up with a smack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, All yeah, right, back to things, your normal yeah. recording now. One, one of the thing, one of the good things that you learn at IHBK is extreme discipline. Okay. So, like how you say you want to end it with a smack, we never get to that point. Like you would really have to threaten us to get to that point. Right. You know what I mean? If you like you said, you've seen the tape, so we have people screaming, yelling, wanting to threaten us with a fight or whatever. And there's a way that you can put that in place. That in the Israelite school of UPK, you learn with the extreme discipline and protocols that we have in place. That's why you say we do it aggressively, we do it calmly. It depends on what the situation asks for. So there's times where I've had to be loud, but there's times where I could be cool and do the same thing. And when they walk away, it means nothing to me because I don't I don't have the emotion that comes with that because of the discipline that you learn in high school. Okay. okay, now I'm gonna ask you a question. What got you started in ISB? What start, got me started, I used to be K, um, in about 2009. Like, I used to be in the Christian church, so to speak. Or, and the closest I would say to Islam would be Malcolm. And I think everybody could gravitate to Malcolm because he was an eloquent speaker and he was compassionate. But I couldn't be a Muslim because of the Bible, because of my belief in Christ. So I started seeing the Israelites in you know, uh, about September of 2009. Uh, around November, I kind of started taking it seriously. And then in February of, of 2010 is when I found ISUBK. And once I found ISUBK, the first speaking I saw was they had a white man on their knees kissing their feet. I saw that. From, saw that, that, from that video, I was like, I was like this. I was like, okay, this is where I want to be. Because again, they had a level of discipline to where they was talking to the white man aggressive, like, nah, you're gonna get on your knees, you're gonna pay for what your ancestors did to us. And so that kind of got me locked in, and then I had what I said we needed in the beginning, which was the compassion. So from that, it was in Philadelphia, so I used to travel to Philadelphia for like two or three years straight, just coming to class, going to camp, learning what it takes to do this job. And so having that compassion for black people, because I was sick of like the drug dealing, the murder, uh, black women not having the man to show them the direction, our children not having nothing, nobody giving a damn about them, and I wanted to do something about it. And so we always talk, we always talking, but not a lot of walking. So I just wanted to walk, and I should be K taught me how to do this. So do you see that we have a, a, a seems to be we have a little black renaissance going on in the last, I guess, five years? It seems like we have a black renaissance. This is lows and highs. Right. It seems like we have a, a black renaissance. What do you think about the diverse group of African American organizations that are coming to the forefront to defend our people? I think what you're starting to see is black people starting to finally get fed up with the oppression. The, the mysticism of the I have a dream that Martin Luther King destroyed us with. It's starting to now slowly start to wear off because we realize that his dream was a nightmare. Integration destroyed us. Um, loving the white man, that forgiveness that Martin Luther King was talking about, it set us back so far because when you think about Martin Luther King's dream, when he died, you had the Panthers that came back after that, that wanted to be militant. And then they were slaughtered. Right. And not only was they slaughtered, but now the thing became, if you're not going to do it like Martin being nonviolent, then it wasn't really legit. And so now we're starting to see, is that so-called, I have a dream? didn't work. So now that's why, like you said, in the past five years, you start seeing all these black groups come up. Most recently, you have the adults group come up. But now you start seeing black people are fed up. Even the, um, we're finding out with the colleges that it wasn't good to leave the historical, we call them HBCU because we left them. They, were, they ain't no historical Notre Dame or historical Penn State because they never stopped going. They're historical black colleges because once we wanted to integrate, we started leaving those colleges and then establishing the white colleges. So now they're historical because we ain't had no more. Imagine if we would have never left. Imagine if the Negro League, I always bring this up in my speaking, we used to have our own league of baseball, not a team. 
And because of Jackie Robinson wanted to hit that white baseball, because we wanted to impress our daddy, we left a whole league. When you think about a league, right? If you go to Yankee Stadium, you ain't just watching the game. You might buy some memorabilia, so now you're buying the Yankee jerseys. You might get hungry, so now you're eating the hot dogs. So we just left a whole commerce. Thank you. You see how we fighting for businesses now? That Negro League provided a business. But integration destroyed that. So now we're starting to see the residual effects of that. And we're saying enough is enough. So now you have a bunch of black people. They may not be ready for the Bible or learning who they are, but they are sure ready to separate from the so-called white man. And so now we have to capitalize on that. And so you capitalize on that by saying brothers can't be enemies to brothers anymore. We have to recognize who the enemy is and come together for that fight. So that's what I said. Now that was a hell of an interview. Tell our viewers how they can reach you. I, I, I appreciate it. That. You can go to our website, ISUB, www.isubk.com. Um, we also on YouTube. If you just YouTube, ISUBK. Um, we have a radio show on Mondays called The Grill with Commander Jenny Ahana. I do a radio show every Thursday called Cross the Line Radio. The name of the channel is Cross the Line Radio. We have a headquarters here in uh, New York City where we have classes Monday through Friday um, at 2279 Third Ave in Harlem, New York. You come there. Any questions, you can call me directly and for the school number is 646-481-6315. With that, say shalom. Islam. <laughs> All right, brother. I appreciate it.